Hi everyone, and welcome, welcome to this chapter called White Pony. This is going to be about unicorn whiskeys that I have tried. So, when I was doing this, when I was thinking of quite a few whiskeys I wanted to tell you about that I have tried during my travels or journey so far in whiskey territory. But um, then I thought to myself, no, I'm not going to do all of them. I'm going to do three of them. So, yeah. And uh, these three whiskeys are actually not in any way Scott whiskeys, these three I choose actually. So there are three whiskeys. One of them is from America or the United States of America. Um, and two of them are actually Japanese whiskeys. Um, these are unicorn whiskeys due to the fact that the two Japanese whiskeys, if I'm ever gonna <laughs> be able to buy those, uh, I will live in my car rest of my life with depths, with depths, depth, depth. And uh, yeah, an American one, I have try to get a hold of, you can get it once a year, I think it is, it's released, but it's a collectible thing as well, so it's just not for drinking, mostly just for collecting and, you know, selling on secondary market, unfortunately. So, um, <coughs> while I'm talking there, I'm actually going to drink a whiskey here. No, it's not a Bomber, it's just a Bomber glass I got the distillery, 2016. But I have a very special liquid in here, because this is also, to some people, for some reason, um, a unicorn whiskey, and this is a Japanese whiskey, of course, but it's not one of those Japanese whiskeys I'm going to be talking about, but um, it's this one. The Yamasaki Bourbon Barrel 2014. 13, yeah. Um, <coughs> yes, released seven years ago, basically. It is really good. The prices on this one is just ridiculous. I did a review on this one way, way, way back in the beginning. Um, so, yeah. I could do a re release or re review on this one, on one of the new chapters for this half of the year. So yeah, but I will be drinking this one as I'm talking about the other ones, just to, if you're wondering, so yeah. Um, so the first one is of course going to be the American one, and that's going to be, hopefully I don't pronounce this one wrong, because I probably do the Thomas H. Handy Susserick Straight Rye, I think it's called, from the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. I do not know which year it is, it was released and all that, so don't ask me about it, because I don't know, basically. It could be, a t I don't know. Um, I will put pictures on these three whiskeys though, so, yeah, but the pictures are from a very old camera, so, yeah, the quality is not always the best, but it's the best I got, so, so, anyway, the whiskey, Thomas H. the Sazerac Rye, is definitely one of the best whiskeys I have ever tried, it's in the top ten, it is a rye whiskey American, uh, it is fucking good, seriously, I have never tried it. Very few whiskeys I've tried when I, you know, <clears throat> you know, when it hit your palate, you know, in the nose and everything, you're just realizing that it's going to be something very special. And it is. I mean, you can still get them. You know, they release one each year. I know in America they are, you know, the lottery things. They had one release a few years back here in Sweden. Unfortunately, I signed up for that, you know, click as fast as you can, but, you know, I didn't get it. So that's how it is. But the whiskey was just. Oh, good. So good. So, yeah. I didn't get one. It's just one of those whiskeys I can get, if I'm lucky enough. It will cost me at the highest 200 euros, I think. But they're so hard to get, unfortunately. So, yeah. That's what it is. Uh, but the, what about the two Japanese whiskeys? Yeah. Japanese whiskeys. Today, if you start whiskey, start your whiskey journey, there's going to be a few... The shortest, the shortest, short, yeah. You're gonna just realize that Japanese whiskeys are really expensive already. Uh, you're gonna find very few uh, age statement whiskeys. Most of them there today, the age statements are probably not gonna be even be Japanese whiskeys or, or you know, all Japanese whiskey and can probably be a mixture of Scottish whiskey in them as well or just Scottish whiskey as reliable as Japanese whiskey. Um, back in the day when I started, you know, there was Yamasaki, Hakushu, Nika, Takatsuru, Suru, you know, all those brands, you know, all the way up to 25 and they didn't cost that much. Today, they are just ridiculously overpriced. So, the first one I'm going to talk about, because they're, I think they're owned by the same company that bought them up, I think. Or, yeah, taking care of the same guy. I'm not going to talk too much about the distillers themselves, but the first one... I'm going to talk about, because I have notes here, because I need to have the notes. Because if I don't, I'm going to say wrong things, and it's going to be a mess. I'll do this all over again. So, the first one 
it's special to me in the way it was the first time ever I tried a whiskey, a sherry whiskey with uh, sulfuric, you know, the sulfur notes you can get sometimes get with some sherry whiskies, sherry whiskies, and yeah, and it was this one. This was the first time ever I tried a whiskey with that sulfur note, and when the person I was trying with with at that time that we worked with in the same school. Um, we were just, no, we didn't drink in school. We had this after works once a month on a Friday. We got this local pub in our town. Eat and drink some whiskeys, try new ones. And uh, this was one of them that was recommended by the bartender or the one who's working there who knew a lot about whiskeys. Uh, we tried a lot of good, good whiskeys that day, but that night, by the way. Um, but this one, if we, I'm gonna keep to the subject, <laughs> was. Um, it blew my mind away because when we tried it, we were just like, okay, it was good. But we were like, there's something about it. We could just couldn't find out about it, what it was that was just special about it, you know. And um, I tried to figure, you know, the taste and the smell because there was something it really reminds us both of, of. And we started to figure out, you know, more and more like, yeah. And then we thought of ourselves, New Year's Eve, you know, when people are firing rockets up in the air. New Year's Eve rockets and all that, you know, the smell of that um, burn, or everything that burns, you know, not houses, <laughs> cars, but, um, you know, when they're up in the sky and exploding, you can feel that sulfuric notes, I think you call it as explosive stuff, and that is what it was, basically, sorry, I'm just itching in my nose, I'm not picking it, uh, and it just was mind-blowing to me, and it took me a long time before I actually ever found, found a whiskey to buy that had those sulfuric notes, and I love the, when there's a lot of sulfur notes on a whiskey, especially shared whiskies. That's usually what, what they are, sulfur notes. And mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is what it is there. You know, it's just mind blowing to me when I try that whiskey the first time. And uh, and I've probably thinking he's been talking for quite some time. What is the whiskey now? What is that whiskey? Well, the whiskey's name is Chiro. It's Chiro's uh, Malt Card Series. It is uh, heart, um, yeah, like I have my thing here, heart, and it's the 8 one, heart card 8, or it's called. Uh, it was um, a 70 year old whiskey, 56.8%. It was one of 617 bottles ever made. It was finished in Spanish oak or also sherry pot. So, yeah, um, buying this whiskey today is gonna cost you, um, wow, this is gonna cost you <laughs> ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, I think I have seen some people trying to sell this for between. Maybe 900 to 2,000, maybe 3,000 euros. Yep. That is ridiculous. A lot of money. But at the same time, it's going to close the steering. And it was just a series, uh, but it did, I don't know, a whole card, you know, series. So it's like 54, 57 cards, I think. So yeah, if you have all those, you, you can tell right now. <laughs> yeah, you can sell them quite a lot of money, but you know. You will miss out on a legendary distillery and a legendary series of whiskies. I tried two of them, this one and the Heart 5. I don't remember much about the Heart 5, but I remember the Heart 8 very well. Yeah, just because of the sulfur notes. So that's that one, yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just itchy. Uh, itchy, itchy. Uh, next one, the Japanese one, the last one, is still to this day the best whiskey I have ever tried. Definitely. It is actually so good that I went to the same place three times. The last time I did a ball kill on it. You know, just a dram on itself, you know, it would cost me quite a lot there. But this was a whiskey I knew I could never afford to buy the bottle because I think a bottle of that now goes for, yeah, between four, maybe even up to ten, maybe twenty thousand. Curious. I could be wrong here on the estimation of the auction ones, but I think it was something like that. It's just ridiculous just how much money those goes. But still time, is it also a closed Japanese distillery? It's um, Kurisawa, or Karisawa, Kurisawa whiskey. It's the only one I ever tried. And I wanted to try it just because I knew I would never be able to buy a whiskey. And that's a part of my whiskey journey sometimes has been trying whiskies from this close distillery, so those unicorn whiskies that I will never be able to buy because of the secondary prices and all that, or just because of the availability of it, you know, close distillery. Every bottle opened is just one bottle less, but still, it needs to be open, I think. Something needs to be, you know, saved so they can be open later on in the years to come, <coughs> so people can actually know what it was that the distillery was like, because Kurosawa that bottle was 
and mind blowing to me. It was so good, actually. I can say it, right. it is the best whiskey I ever tried so far because it was just that good, just that good. So, the technical stuff on the whiskey the Curacao is a cask 3692. It was a 22, 28 year old sherry bot. Only 359 bottles were produced from this single cask. So, yeah. And you already understand close distillery and all that. <clears throat> it's gonna be a lot of money on it. But they weren't that pricey when they came out. I mean I think this bottle cost around two hundred to three hundred euros when it came out and I was like over a few thousand euros at least. Two thousand to three thousand euros, something like that. Over the sometimes some people try and sell them for. You know, so it is crazy, really crazy. And yeah, it's Sad when those comes to with uh, the close distilleries when they become like that, but you know, it was happens unfortunately with those times we live in, you know, with bottle flippers and collectors and all that. You know, I have some bottles from the Swedish close distillery <coughs> that I have picked up, you know, but they're still they're expensive already as they are. So yeah, but that's just me sharing my uh, whiskey unicorn moments because that's what unicorn moments are. I mean. You might never be able to buy certain whiskies because they're out of your price range for a bottle. It still doesn't mean that you can't try them, basically. It might cost you a little bit extra, but I do think um, sometimes it can be worth it because at least then you get an idea of what the whisky was about. You know, I tried Port Allen Bora as well, St. Magdalene. Um, I didn't try George G. Stag, which I didn't find to my liking because I it numbed my tongue because of the high ABV. So sign language all the night, basically. Uh, yeah, and some other stuff as well I've tried, you know. Some other bourbons, uh, peppermint winkle as well. I mean, good stuff, but uh, these three whiskeys just stood out to me. Just really stood out to me because of how they are. And I was thinking, actually, I'm not going to start a trend here. But, you know, if you want to, you can actually write in the comment field down below after, after you watch the video like if you have some unicorn whiskies that you tried or want to try you know just sharing is caring you know it's not that you're gonna share samples but share your experience or some of the whiskies that you want to try and i have actually talked so much that i forgot to try this whiskey <laughs> jesus christ i can tell you right one thing damn good damn good so yeah that's my conclusion and I've been talking now for like what 40 minutes, something like that. So I will see you next time. I mean, on that will be just be a not a music video review, but a whiskey review. So yeah, take care and have a good day. Bye.